Hello and welcome to another presentation of Tech for Everyone, free training in tech provided by tsquareg.net. If you've got a question about tech, email us at tsquareg at gmail.com. We'll try and answer you. Well, today's presentation is all about memory. There are lots of things that are important in a PC's memory, and in terms of the CompTIA A+, we're going to see if we can answer a few of them. For example, what is RAM and ROM? And what do the numbers mean on a RAM stick? When you go into a store and buy sticks of RAM, those numbers mean something. So hopefully we'll be able to answer some questions about those. Specifically, how do you calculate the bus memory and bandwidth of a RAM stick? Stick with us and you'll find out. Well, our first question, a very important one, is what is RAM? It actually stands for something. RAM is another name for system memory. It is, of course, random access memory. This is the memory used by the PC to store data and programs when running because it's faster than reading it from a hard drive. Actually, if we had to read our data from a hard drive, the PC would be very, very slow indeed. It does require constant power to store its contents. Everyone knows that if you're working on a document and you lose power, you lose everything. It was stored in RAM, it lost the power, it lost its contents. What you're looking at here is a photograph of a couple of RAM sticks and you can see that there is a sticker with some very interesting numbers on them. In a moment, we're going to talk about what some of these numbers mean and a couple of calculations we can run through in order to work out a couple of things. Before we get there, we need to identify what's going on in terms of ROM, which is a different kind of memory. It is read-only memory, and what's important about it is that it does not require power to store data the data is already there. You can update it, but you don't need to have the power on constantly to keep the contents there. Because of that, it's sometimes called non-volatile memory. And as a matter of fact, RAM is often referred to as volatile memory. Try and remember that. There are different types of RAM that exist, and in your studies, you will come across dynamic RAM, dynamic random access memory. What it relies on is a charge keeping the contents of memory where they are. If that charge is lost or if it's not refreshed, the contents in memory are lost. Because it's an older technology, each RAM stick operated on a 32-bit data bus most modern motherboards use 64 bits in their data bus, and therefore these RAM sticks had to be installed in pairs. The data bus was primarily the FSB, the front side bus. It's a very old technology. It's not really found on a lot of systems today. SD RAM is yet another type of RAM. It stands for Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory. The key term there being synchronous. It's synchronized to the system clock on the motherboard. And I just mentioned it, that's our front side bus. So they've got to be moving at the same speed. On newer PCs, we have what's called DDR RAM. The DDR standing for double data rate. Now you can see from the term that something's happening, something's being doubled. In fact, the data is transferred twice as fast, hence the term double data rate. If it's DDR2, it doubles the da data rate, but there are other versions of DDR memory, one of which is DDR3, which quadruples the data transfer rate. So it multiplies it by a factor of four. There are a couple of other terms that you do need to be aware of. We've got the bus or clock speed, which is the speed of the bus used on the motherboard. So that's just the speed of the bus 
on the motherboard, which has to be matched to the memory in SD RAM, you'll remember. Again, it's normally the speed of the front side bus. In a previous presentation, we talked about the front side bus being the communication pathway between memory and the CPU. Very important indeed. If we're talking about memory speed now, we're talking about the speed at which the memory chips themselves on the stick of RAM are operating on. When it comes to DDR memory, that is multiplied. Let's have a look at an example of what's going on. A computer with a bus speed of 200 megahertz is using DDR2 memory. What does all of that mean? Well, the actual memory speed is 200 divided by 2, which is 100 megahertz. Remember what I said. The memory speed is doubled because we're using DDR2 memory. So DDR2 has increased the memory speed to 200 megahertz. We can now use the 200 megahertz to work out the maximum data rate of this type of memory. How do we do it? Very simple rule. We take the bus speed, we multiply it by 2, and then we multiply it by 8. And the final answer is the maximum data rate. In this example, you can see it's 3200 megabytes per second. Let's try another one. A computer with a bus speed of 533 megahertz is using DDR3 memory. Now you've got to remember that DDR3 quadruples the speed to 533 megahertz. It multiplies it by a factor of four, which means that the memory speed, the actual memory speed, must be a quarter of that. And you can see there it's 133 megahertz. Again, how do we, ma how do we work out the maximum data rate? Well, multiply by two and multiply by eight. And there we have it, 8,500 megabytes per second. Why don't you try this one? A computer with a bus speed of 800 megahertz is using DDR3 memory. What is the memory speed and what is the maximum data rate? Remember what I said. The memory speed has been multiplied to give us a bus speed because we're using a form of DDR memory. It's DDR3, which means it must be multiplied by a factor of 4. Absolutely right. Which means, therefore, the actual memory speed is 200 megahertz. Let's work out the maximum data rate. Remember the rule, by 2 and then by 4. So we take our 800 megahertz, multiply it by 2, and then multiply it by 8, and there is the maximum data rate of 12800 megabytes per second. There's a simple rule that we can follow. Once you know the bus speed or the clock speed, multiply it by 2, then multiply it by 8, and then you'll end up with the maximum data rate. In fact, it sounds a little bit like a song or a rhyme. Any way you want, just try and remember it. One more. A computer with a bus speed of 266 megahertz is using DDR2 memory. What's the memory speed? It's DDR2. There's the um, bus speed of 266 megahertz. So we are going to divide by 2. That's absolutely right to get 133 megahertz. So the maximum data rate, use the rule by 2, by 8, and there it is. 4256 megabytes per second. So what have we got to remember here? If you know the bandwidth and the memory type, you can in fact work in reverse to determine the memory and the bus speed. It's an easy thing to remember both ways. If you're multiplying by 2 and then by 8, to go the reverse, we divide by 8 and then we divide by 2. It's very, very simple indeed. So in summary, what have we learned here? RAM 
needs power to retain its contents, its random access memory. It must have power. ROM will retain its contents without the need for power at all. There are different types of RAM going from DRAM all the way up to DDR3 RAM. And the simple rule when working out what the maximum data rate is, you multiply by two, then multiply by eight. That was another presentation from Tech for Everyone. I want to thank you for listening and goodbye.